Hey Eagles fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into the Eagles Report, and today we're going to go ahead and answer all of your mailbag questions from should the Eagles trade up in the first round, who should they take in the first round, should they trade for Stephon Diggs or Darius Slay? We'll answer all those questions and more on today's mailbag. And further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so we do this about once every one to two weeks here on the Eagles Report. I ask for you guys to submit questions on a certain video. I think it was the Monday video. And then I answer as many questions as possible here from you guys, the Eagles Report fans. Before we start, thumbs up if your question got uh, uh, answered here. And if not, give a thumbs up anyway. And also, we are so close to 5,000 subscribers. I'm going to keep hounding you guys till we get to 5K because we're just that close. So subscribe down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Without further ado, Dustin Bond has our first question. He says... Uh, let's say Eagles draft Henry Ruggs, then want to double down on a wide receiver. It is between Denzel Mims from Baylor or Michael Pittman Jr. from USC. I guess, is it between Denzel Mims from Baylor or Michael Pittman Jr. from USC? First off, I love the draft of Henry Ruggs. I, I will stand by this until they essentially don't do what I think they're going to do. They're going to draft a wide receiver in the first round. They've got to draft a wide receiver in the first round. Whether that's at 21, they want to move up, doesn't matter. They need to get out of the first round with a wide receiver. Now, I've said many times, and those of you guys subscribe to the channel know this, I think you got to come away with at least two new wide receivers this offseason. Now, you can do that via trading for a guy like Stephon Diggs. You could sign a guy from free agency like a Rashad Perryman or a um, uh, or Robbie Anderson. Or you could draft two players. And he brings up Denzel Mims, who I actually covered at Baylor. I'm a Baylor graduate. I called Baylor's games on the, on the uh, uh, Baylor football games on the radio. I covered the team. I've been around Denzel Mims for the better part of three years. He has everything you want in a later round wide receiver. I mean, he has the hands. He has the size. He has the speed. A lot of those Baylor wide receivers come out and they still know how to run routes, but underneath Matt Rule, it's a brand new Baylor offense. So I really think Denzel Mims is going to be a steal in the draft for whoever takes him. He had a crazy great senior bowl. He's going to have a very good combine. I'm already predicting that. And I think you could see him rise from being a fifth to fourth round draft pick to being a second or third round draft pick. Now, the Eagles have four picks in the first two, in the first three rounds, I believe, two in the third round. Might be five picks. It's a lot of picks in the first two days. I mean, they have a ton of picks overall. If you could come away with Henry Ruggs and Denzel Mims in this draft, I mean, the Eagles at wide receiver are 100 times better than where they were at a year ago and 100 times better than where they are at right now. Because you got to remember, Alshon most likely will be on the team in 2020. Obviously, Deshaun Jackson's going to be there. Greg Ward, uh, J.J. I think a white side. That's it right now. It's not a horrible receiving core, but it's definitely bottom 10 in the league. You add a guy like Henry Ruggs, the explosive 4-3 speed of Henry Ruggs, and then just the overall grown man route running slash um, um, catching ability of Denzel Mims. This wide receiver core for Carson Wentz gets a ton better. I'd love to see them get Denzel Mims. I like Marcel, or, um, excuse me, Michael Pittman Jr. from USC. <laughs> excuse me, you can't go wrong with him either. I've just seen Denzel Mims up close. I'm telling you guys. He is the real deal and will be taken higher in the draft than a lot of people are projecting right now because he's going to blow some people away at the Combine and in the personal interviews. Okay, this next question. Do you think the Eagles will consider trading for Darius Slay, and what would you be willing to give up? Okay, we did a video on this a couple of days ago. I'll reiterate it again. Yes, the Eagles are going to be interested in trading for Darius Slay just because they've been interested in trading for Darius Slay for the past two or three years. Every single trade deadline, it seems like Detroit has Slay on the auction block, and people are like, oh, the Eagles should trade for him. The Eagles are like, oh, maybe we'll trade for him. And then they want a first-round draft pick, and Philadelphia does not want to give up first-round draft picks. As we've seen, Philadelphia is very hard-pressed to trade away a first-round draft pick because they like picking, obviously, in the first round because of the whole talent that you can get there. I think they will kick the bucket on Darius Slay, but they would not give up number 21 overall. Now, you want to take a second and a fifth or a second plus Sidney Jones or a second plus Avante Maddox? Fine. Trade it. Do it. This is a guy who's been in the Pro Bowl through, uh, all three of the last three years. He's as good of a defender as they come. And if Detroit's in rebuild mode, if they want to draft Tua at number three, they don't really need a veteran cornerback like Darius Slay because the rebuild would not be this year. It would take a little bit longer in terms of getting them back to... I guess a competitive team overall, which they have not been due to Stafford injuries the past couple of years. So I would not give up a first. I would give up a second in a player because you have multiple seconds, and that would really help out a cornerback um, group that's just been struggling a lot the past couple of years. I mean, they, they're just a roller coaster. It's up and down in terms of when Jalen Mills plays well, when Sidney Jones plays well, Avante Maddox will have a game or two, Darby, but then they just can't put it all together for 16 games. And we know you got to have great corners in the National Football League because people are throwing and wide receivers are able to carve you up. Cade Mathis asks, what is your ideal first-round pick, top free agent target, and top trade target? Hmm, okay, Um, Cade, let me think about this. 
Ideal first round pick would be Jared Judy. That's who I'd want. He's the best receiver in the draft. The problem is you have to trade up to get him. Most realistic one is Henry Ruggs or T. Higgins, but I would like Jerry Judy as my ideal first round pick. My top free agent target, honestly, is either Byron Jones or Robbie Anderson. I think they need to go get a cornerback if they don't trade for one with Darius Slay, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But I would go ahead and get Byron Jones because you steal him away from, from the Cowboys, make him play the Cowboys twice a year, and he's the best free agent cornerback in the National Football League. And then the top trade target would either be Diggs or Darius Slay again. A lot of uh, up and down controversy on Stephon Diggs. Would he be loyal to Philadelphia? Would he be a distraction? I think he'd be loyal to Philadelphia. If you didn't get a wide receiver in free agency and you only drafted one, I'd be willing to trade something, maybe a third or a fourth for Stephon Diggs because the wide receiver market is so strong in terms of the, the, the draft and free agency. The trade market's going to come down a little bit. So I was going to say, as I said, Judy, Byron Jones, and Diggs, although Slay, again, for the right price, Slay versus Diggs, I don't really care which one you get because both are a need, but I just don't want to give up a first-round draft pick for either of them because they are not worth a first-round draft pick. Princess Gamer 1. Congratulations, Princess Gamer 1. You're an Eagles fan. Which wide receiver do you see the Eagles moving up in the draft to get? If they move up to get any of them, it's going to be Jerry Judy. There's no point in moving up for Henry Ruggs. There's no point in moving up for a Justin Jefferson because the odds are they're going to be pretty darn close to being there at number 21. Now, if you wanted to leapfrog two spots up to 19 to get Henry Ruggs because you think 20 is going to take him, eh, you know, then you could go and work something out. But the only one that I see worth move, moving up for is probably Jerry Judy. CeeDee Lamb is interesting, but I'm just not sure I'm sold on a Big 12 wide receiver in the first round. Now, I'm not saying that Hollywood Brown did not have a good year last year, but it's kind of a similar player, a little bit bigger in terms of CeeDee Lamb. I've seen CeeDee Lamb play up close when I was covering Baylor. I've called Oklahoma games. He's very good. I just don't know if I would trade up in the first round to get him. Judy, to me, is a lot better, although that's very debatable. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments section. Um, J.J. Williams, should the Eagles move up, in the, um, should they move up to get rugs in the draft? Again, I just mentioned that, you know, it's going to be tough to do. I just don't know. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to jump in front of Denver? We we, we worry that Denver's going to take him? I think Denver takes C.D. Lamb. I think it goes Judy, Lamb, and then Ruggs, and the hope is that Oakland is already off the board in terms of they're picking like 19th overall for uh, one of their multiple first-round draft picks. You hope that Oakland doesn't take him. And if Oakland doesn't take him, you're basically home free until 21. So I think we can sit tight and go ahead and get uh, Henry Ruggs. Michael Richmond asks, who's the best fit for being the backup quarterback? Listen. I mean, it's just very, very easy. It's Nate Sudfeld. And I don't know why Nate Sudfeld did not suit up for the majority of last year. Maybe he had an injury. I, I don't remember him having an injury, but maybe he did. But Sudfeld was basically inactive for the majority of the Eagles games because they had Josh McCown. Now, a lot of people like to hate on Josh McCown for the playoff performance. I thought he was fine. He pulled a Taurus hamstring, and he was still balling out and had a chance to win. But Sudfield has been said to be one of the best young quarterbacks in the National Football League, and he's played well in preseason. I think as a backups go, the Eagles already have the best one. I just don't know why they're not playing him more. I think Sudfield's probably getting a little bit frustrated with that as well. Uh, Seth Shifley asks, what do you think about a blockbuster trade for Stephon Gilmore? No, because one... They won't do it. And two, why would you give up your first round draft pick plus other multiple picks to go ahead and get a cornerback when you can sign one in free agency who is arguably just as good in Byron Jones? Okay, um, who in your opinion is one player the Eagles need to pick up this offseason? Oh, man, Meatmaker's asking, who in your opinion you need to pick up this offseason? He, says, let's get to, he also says, let's get this band to 5K where I smash that MF like button. Share with your Eagles friends. Thank you, Meatmaker. I appreciate that very much. Um... You know, I'm going to go position. I think they really need need to get a wide receiver. I, I You know, and there's a lot of wide receivers that you can get. I just can't settle in on one of them. Cornerbacks, the same way. You get Chris Harris Jr., you get Byron Jones, you trade for Darius Slay. There's just a lot of great options out there. I'd say instead of one player the Eagles need to get this offseason, one position has got to be wide receiver because Carson Wentz needs to be paired with an elite wide receiver. That way they can go forward and have the most success as possible. Um, Robert Whalen, I've heard a few people saying to trade Ertz. Maybe a horrible idea, but what do you think? I don't know who you're hearing. I'm not hearing that at all. No, 0% chance they trade Ertz. That's Carson Wentz's number one target. They gave him a contract extension. He's going to be there for many, many years. If they got rid of Ertz, <coughs> excuse me, they got rid of Ertz with the current wide receiver core they have, I mean, they barely even move, move the football. Goddard's good, and Goddard had, he had a big year last year. It kind of came into his own. We were hoping for that, but you got to have Ertz. The one-two punch is very, very, um, uh, is very, very important overall. Someone else asked, and I can't find where it is, but I'm going to go ahead and answer it right now to kind of finish up here. Someone else is asking, would you uh, consider drafting a linebacker in the first round? I would considering it. It's getting a little more important to me as the days go by. I start to realize that no Nigel Bradham. People are telling me Nathan Gary, you know, had a great year last year, and he, he was fine. 
But is Nathan Gary the linebacker of the future? No, I think we're kind of devaluing linebacker in the National Football League, when in reality, it's very, very important. Now, first round, not bad. Isaiah Simmons, the Clemson linebacker, who's obviously going to be the first linebacker off the board. And Kenneth Murray is a little bit undersized from Oklahoma. An absolute tackling machine. The question will be, will Patrick Queen go in the first round as well? I don't see it. I think these are the only two linebackers that will go, much like Devin White and Devin Bush last year. You can make the argument at 21 overall, they need to go linebacker. I, 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 I would understand if they wanted to do that. I think wide receiver, because think about it. They can get their wide receiver in free agency or the trade. They can get their cornerback in free agency or the trade. Those are your top two needs. After that is linebacker. And if you still have an Isaiah a Simmons or a Kenneth Murray sitting there at 21, and so let's say Henry Ruggs is off of the board, and the two good cornerbacks in the first round are off the board as well, I would not be surprised if they go ahead and take Kenneth Murray because, again, best player available for a position at need. It could be him depending on when these uh, wide receivers go. Because remember, uh, Oakland needs a wide receiver. You could argue that Denver needs a wide receiver. There's a couple of teams ahead of us that need wide receivers. Good thing there will be five wide receivers taken in the first round. So you'll have your pick of at least two or three, but it might not be the two or three that you're hoping for because I really think they want Lamb, Ruggs, or Jerry Judy. And the question will be, will they be there at, 20, uh, at 21 I think at least one will be. I think Henry Ruggs will. But obviously, as the draft process continues to go, combine results matter, interviews matter, pro days matter. These guys' draft stock are going to go up and down as the days and weeks go by. We'll just have to wait and see what happens overall for our Philadelphia Eagles. Hope that answered all of your questions. Again, we're running out of time here. Trying to just get as many questions as possible answered. We had a lot more. So if your question was not answered, subscribe down below. Like the video, and then next week when I do another mailbag video, comment your question down there, and most likely I will go ahead and pull that question. Before we go, I want to thank you guys again for getting me as close to 5,000 subs as possible. We'll probably have 5,000 by next week. You might be watching this video later on in the week, and you'll be like, oh, you're already at 5,000 subs. Congrats. So thank you guys for making me grow the channel. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, did he buy subscribers? How did he grow so fast? We're growing fast because it's quick content. It's the best content. We're in and out, and there's no BS. I have the news. I gave my opinion on it, and we move on. That's what you guys want here on YouTube. That's what works so well, and I really thank you and appreciate each and every one of you. We're trying to be the fastest-growing Eagles channel to 10,000 subs. That's the next goal, and it only is possible with your guys' help. So I thank you. Appreciate you. All time we have for today for the Eagles Report. I'm Thomas Mott, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Did you like that video? Thanks for watching, but why don't you click this video right here because we did it just a couple of days ago and guess what? It's about the Eagles too. Like that video? Why don't you subscribe right down here? That way you're notified whenever we release more videos here on the Eagles Report. It's the fastest growing Eagles channel here on YouTube. Video, subscribe, click them right now. Go ahead, click them.